So the next talk here, and this is just, whenever we, re we receive this CFP, it, it was just fascinating to get such an inside view. Is, is this your first talk? Ever. Okay, so everybody put your hands together. This is Christine Giglio. Giglio's first talk ever. <laughs> Plus a thousand points. So just, you know. Go hey, easy. I didn't say this rowdy audience could fine. leave. No, that's all right. Thank you, Minus guys. Minus 1,000 points for all of RIT. <laughs> all right, so ju just a fascinating talk. Um, and I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but, you know, I'm just going to let Cri Christine talk because uh, ju just a fascinating topic. Thanks for your submission. Christine. All right, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. All right, so my name is Christine Giglio, like he said, and I am the CAD administrator for the Department of E911 Communications in Bedford County, Virginia. I've been doing that for about a year now, and for 10 years before that, I was the public safety land administrator for Bedford County as well. That did fire and rescue, the sheriff's office, and 911. So my talk today is going to be information security and 911 when the location of your emergency is inside the building. You'd be surprised. Okay, I think my thing's not working, so we'll just use this. All right, so in the past, 911 centers were generally closed networks. There was no reason to open them out to the outside world. Data between the squad cars and the uh, dispatch center was all done over the radio system. However, in recent years, there has been newer technology. A lot of CAD vendors, they want to utilize cloud storage like AWS and stuff. There's also gunshot detectors that they put throughout the you know, different neighborhoods. And when a gunshot is heard, they talk to dispatch about it. They alert dispatch. And then also a big thing is school safety, so there's panic buttons for the schools so that school people can hit a button and it'll contact dispatch and say there's a problem. So now they're starting to open up their network. We've never had a chance to think about the problems that could exist from that. And we basically do it live. I think the term is on the fly is what we use in 911. So I'm gonna talk to you about the three things that keep me up at night, the three things that I think you all, is so you pay my salary, basically. You all need to know about these problems because they can affect you. And this talk is also just informational. I don't really have any solution to it except for education. So the three things I'm gonna talk about are denial of service, swatting or prank calls or hoax calls in 911, which I'm just gonna refer to it as swatting and then the computer-aided dispatch network, or the CAD network. All right, so tele telephony denial service attacks. It is so easy to take down a 911 center. In my center, we have eight administrative lines. We can receive eight wireline calls at once and four wireless calls at once. 80% of our calls come in wireless. So if there's a storm and we got five people calling on their cell phones, one gets a busy signal. So in the top story, that was where that kid put out the Twitter link and then they clicked on it and it took their iPhone and, and their iPhone just hammered 911. And the reason it hit Maricopa County is most of, apparently most of his followers were in the same geographical location. So when you dial 911 on your phone, your cell phone, thanks to enhanced 911, um, it takes where your location is and sends you to the correct 911 center. And then also, the Dallas was also through the 911 lines, but the administrative or non-emergency lines, those are a published number. And from our call volume from 2018, 65% of our calls came on the administration line or the non-emergency. So taking down the admin lines is a pain in the ass for us. Because all nonverbal calls, we call you back, we call you on the admin line. We don't outgoing calls on the 911 lines. So in the next few years, 911 is going to go through a monumental change. 
They're going to move from enhanced 911, which is location, notification, Annie Alley, all that. You know, you call and it tells you where you're at, to next generation 911, which is a voice over IP private network. And I have to read it. The Emergency Services Internet Protocol Network, the ESINET, that's what we just call it. What this will provide us is bandwidth for really neat features like pictures to 911, videos to 911. It will also provide the ability to spin up your 911 lines anywhere you have connectivity to the ESNet. So those are interesting features. Yeah, However, bad. actually, <laughs> hmm? <laughs> the um, next gen 911, the literature states that there's ways to mitigate against TDOS, but uh, we don't get it until 2020, so I don't really know. I haven't seen it in action. So swatting is such a pain in the ass too. Swatting is a waste of your, resor your resources and my resources, your tax dollars. It also puts my first responders and the citizens at risk. For example, up where it says man who made fatal swatting, that was in Wichita, Kansas, where the guy swatted another guy to some house in Wichita and the guy came out and got shot. Well, that man was completely innocent and he died. Um, it can also be used for bullying. Like, for example, in Ohio, this woman, apparently they called and said that she had drugs on her and they repeatedly do that. So the cops would come and search her and search her house for drugs. And then down at the bottom was a local case, which actually is an unsolved case. We had someone who would hide geographically near a house, call 911, report a hostage situation to that address, and they would literally watch the SWAT team come. That, they did that like five or six times and then they stopped. Luckily with that one, the biggest complaint, and it was a whole article about it, was who's going to pay for my door? So, But there's another way to actually SWAT without even do picking up the phone. And that's through the devil Facebook. <laughs> so you know how you click on the link, report this for suicide or self-injury. You think that goes to a black hole like everything else on that list? It doesn't. It actually goes to the Facebook law enforcement division and they call 911 and they report it. And they give you so much information that you'd be surprised. So they know where you made it, what cell phone you made it from, the number, your email, all that stuff that you put in there, they send to us. The second picture in there was actually a message to the R911 Facebook. And the guy said, I'll just paraphrase it for you. He had a fight with his wife. He's upset. He's going to plow down cars on 81. He's going to put a gun in his mouth. And he's going to blow his head off. And I thought, well, he doesn't have a profile picture. It looks like a new account. Oh, <gasps> I have to report this. So dispatchers are information gatherers. They can't decide if it's fake or not. They have to report regardless. They just, what they hear, you'd be surprised how much they're listening on 911 calls. What they hear, what they've been told, the address, they all put up that in the call for everyone to know about. So this one was a waste of two hours of state police as they drove down up and down 81. Now, the CAD network has some pretty sensitive information in there. First, it has the computer-aided dispatch software, which has every 911 call for however long we keep it, flagged houses for hostile, who has guns, hoarders, animals that might bite you, all that information. Um, if you are very large and you need a, a larger stretcher for EMS, that's all put and flagged in 911. So, uh, you know, that's sensitive. There's also EMS, so there's probably some HIPAA stuff. My uh, center, we don't, our EMS doesn't connect to CAD, they use something else and we just transfer the data to them. Then there's the law enforcement record, records management system, that's RMS, that has your social security numbers of whenever, if you've been arrested. It has also vice ongoing investigations. It has who's allegedly cooking meth, who, Rob the Quickie Mart, everything. 
And then it also has the criminal justice information system, which in Virginia we use VSIN to get to that. And that's where you can just put in your license plate or get a criminal history. The mobile data terminals are, I think, are the biggest risk because they're the ones that the deputies or officers take home and they get on the internet and they open the emails and they're like, oh, I got an attachment from Britain and I know somebody at Britain and they'll open it. I've even heard the excuse, the devil made me do it. <laughs> so, so back when the radio system transmitted data, it was actually serial cable speed and Ten years ago, we switched to air cards with a VPN because it was just way too slow. And I thought I was like, well, the MDTs, maybe not. However, last year, and this was my crowning moment, because I was like, it happened. I told you it can happen. Not, Baltimore's 911 dispatch system got a ransomware attack. I have highlighted it affected the messaging functions within the computer-aided dispatch system. Well, I work with CAD systems. That's where the MDTs talk to the dispatch center. So somehow I think it came in through the MDTs. And then before that, Tennessee got hit and oh look where it came from. The mobile police car or ambulance systems. So obviously it's a problem. And when, you're, when your center's down, if you've ever had a dispatcher try to use a pen and paper, because they keep track of units and they keep track of who's out there and they have we have 70 or 80 complaints, and with each complaint has different units that we have to call. That's all done with the CAD, and without it, they have to do it all by hand, and it's really hard. I, one time during a storm, we laid a map in the middle of the floor, and we would just mark where units were. So um, I used to work with the old telco guy, he's way long retired now, but um, he used to say to me when I was a land administrator, Come on, Christine, just do whatever you can do to keep our names out of the evening news. <laughs> so, well, I work at a small and a rural 911 center, and I think that we don't have the resources to be able to keep track of the stuff, to combat this stuff. And I know places who don't even have IT, they outsource it. So you know whenever there's a problem, that's all the only time that they see somebody there. They're not, no one's there monitoring it all the time. Uh, we're just going to have to talk to other 911 centers. It apparently happens in large ones. Baltimore is not small. But <coughs> we're just going to have to get together to build a smart PSAP, which is a public safety acts answering point or 911 center, cybersecurity strategy. It's just something we got to do, and I just thought you guys would know, should know about this. And the last thing is, is some life advice right there. Never do anything you don't want to explain to the paramedics. <laughs> They've seen it all, but you still don't want to. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. All right. Fascinating stuff. Very fascinating. Um, I, I didn't, I was so fascinated, I didn't take very many notes. Uh, I, do want to, I do want to make one point that's kind of tangential to your talk that the, today in 1990, which is what, 29 years ago, uh, Craig Niedorf, Night Lightning, was arrested for publishing the E911 document in FRAC. Uh, if, we're, if you don't know about it, I encourage you to go look it up and research it. So it's a little bit of our history. So it's, it's, it's appropriate that your talk is here today. Um, this is very, very interesting. Um, I, did you say that the, the officers take the MDTs home yeah. to their house and plug them into their networks? Uh, yes. Okay. I, I They're not supposed to, but, okay. you know, they do. Uh, first talk ever. Awesome. Thank you very much. I, I'm going to issue you a challenge to come back here next year or the year or sometime or another con and do this talk again at a full length and go deeper, more technical. I want more info. I was fascinated by this and I want to know more. Thank you. I didn't know that you were done. Yeah, I, I too, I was absolutely just, my jaw was dropped the whole time. Very, very good talk. Uh, total, first of all, everyone, 
give her a, some applause. That was not only first talk, but a riveting, amazing topic that we all should care about because that's us. That's personal safety. So absolutely good. That's amazing. And yeah, I echo what Space Rogue said. This is continue on, please. You need to be the voice this because you obviously know way more than some of us. So that's really what I have. I give you the sec Barbie champagne salute to that talk. <laughs> well, I uh, not done yet. I, I give the uh, drink from the crystal skull salute. So that's a that's a good one too. Mm. So, yeah, absolutely, um, you know, not to repeat too much of the, the enthusiasm of my fellow judges here, but uh, I, I gave my first talk at Chimucon. I was a panel moderator. It was 11 years ago. And uh, you, you, you would have wiped the floor with me, and I'm so proud of you. It's awesome. Awesome. Um, plus a thousand on the fact that you were really bringing to bear this issue of safety and you, you illustrated, you know, the fact that swatting is attempted murder or is murder, you know, it is real kinetic effect of hacking and you brought that home in a big way. Um, that's also plus a thousand for a real instance of resource exhaustion in the real world using some of these attacks, um, you know, of, of response, emergency response plus a million enlightening to the complex multi-protocol um, systems that we rely on to live. Uh, my brother is a paramedic and a firefighter, so like this, this, this hits me pretty, pretty hard, and we all eventually need an ambulance, I mean sometimes. Um, the only minus was a minor one, it was that you have no answers, but I don't think it's within your power to have the answers to this one. This is, this is, these are systems that have been built over time. So, you know, I give you a pass on having no answers. I mean, geez, are you supposed to solve, like, world peace, too? Right. And then uh, plus a thousand on your conclusion. Um, and I felt like, you know, you've really earned some of these stickers here because of that conclusion. Like, don't do anything you ever need to involve the paramedics with. The uh, for vaginal use and for rectal use only stickers. So thank you for that. <laughs> got rolls of them. Just great talk. Thank you. Yeah.